Uh, we have uh, another young Indian with us today as part of the Voice of the Young segment. Hello, everyone. Uh, right now, I have with me Darshita Devrani. Let's listen to her. Over to you, Darshita. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for inviting me and having you on this and having me on this platform. It's uh, really a wonderful and beautiful initiative of yours, and I'm truly honored and pleasure. And it's my absolute pleasure to be a part of this initiative. I'll briefly start by my introduction. What I'm doing currently, I'm currently working as a consultant with GDI Partners. We GDI Partners are is a is a boutique organization. We are a young impact driven organization. We work with the governments, multilateral philanthropies, nonprofits, uh, and the NGOs with a motive to to Im improve the lives of the people at the bottom of the pyramid by doing large scale interventions. For example, I'm currently working with a philanthropy in the gender and digital space where we are trying to uh, improve the access to digital connectivity for women in rural India. And uh, alongside work, I am a classical dancer. I have learned Kathak for more than 10 years now. And I did my bachelor's degree from Bhatkandi Sangeet Vidya Peet and did my master's as well. So when, along, whenever I get a chance to perform, it's my, uh, it's my hobby, you say. I love performing on events. And uh, I did my uh, graduation in, in BCom honors from Gargi College Delhi University in 2020, where I had the best time to to make friends, to to involve myself in various clubs, various societies, and and then I had the privilege to start my corporate journey working with EY. So I joined EY in 2020, where I worked with the audit division, and alongside uh, alongside uh, audit, I also had the chance to to work with the CSR leader at EY in driving and, uh, and implementing few key employee engagement initiatives. So For this example, was during we COVID multiple time. NGOs and we when, used to... This was, the, this was all during COVID, right? Right, yeah, right. Yeah? So you were working for the core of EY. Right, yeah, this home. was... I never got a chance, yeah. Yeah. So, but right, you were working yeah. from home. I never got a chance to, yeah, visit EY. Okay, you never got a right. chance. Right. Okay, good. So, sorry to interrupt, but go ahead. So yeah, we had the Pan India uh, Employee Volunteering Festival in which we had partnered with more than 100 NGOs, for example, uh, for the kids on, or working for the girls or for the elderly people or uh, in the education space, in the environment space. And we used to do all these initiatives as a part of uh, us making a contribution to our uh, to building a better world. So I was involved in this as well and had the honor of uh, participating in more than 20 plus initiatives where I contributed more than 100 hours and had the chance to get got, get the social impact champion award as well. Wow. So working in these these initiatives, I then uh, had a passion to work in the social impact sector, explore this as my full time job. And uh, soon I got a chance to work in the, C in the CSR advisory at Sattva Consulting. Sattva is a social impact consulting firm based out of India. So I switched to Sattva Consulting after working for almost one and a half years at EY. Uh, at Sattva, I worked with a CSR advisory practice where I got a chance, where I got the best of both the worlds, working at the intersection of business and impact. So essentially, I worked with clients such as the Tata Group, Reliance, GOBP, uh, advising the CXOs of these corporates on how to make a solid CSR strategy and uh, alongside uh, managing the CSR programs at the uh, on the ground, which are implemented by the nonprofits, mm -hmm. and uh, simultaneously we did the uh, field visits as well, where we got a chance to interact with the beneficiaries. And the best part was this: so I was able to see the impact of my work work I, on, on on the ground. And uh, after working in the CSR space for almost one and a half years, uh, uh, all, uh, three months ago, I recently switched to GDI Partners, where I'm currently working uh, again in the social sector space. Okay, hang on. You said you went to the ground. Could you tell us which ground you went to? What was the places you visited? Uh, sure. So I was I worked for the Greenlam Industries. Greenlam is the Asia's largest laminate manufacturer company. So they have the factory in Himachal and in Rajasthan. So the uh, the manufacturing companies they tend to do their CSR intervention in the vicinity of their manufacturing plant. So in the uh, so in near to the factories where the rural people reside. So the 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 three programs the three thematic the program we implemented programs in three thematic areas: the education, health, and water conservation. 
so the rural people the elder the mothers the the young students are uh, uh, residing near to the factory so we did the programs for them for example the um, the health awareness programs on the menstrual hygiene or for the uh, or for the pregnant women awareness programs on health and uh, secondly for the education since it was the covid era so the schools were closed so the uh, the ngo pratham education foundation which is a good which is a, a big name in, in the education in, uh, sector ngo so it did the uh, community led interventions for example we distributed tablets to the students second we made the mother groups of mothers in the community and and a mother leader who was taking programs and workshops for the children in the community so the programs were essentially for the community uh, in the health space in the education and in the water conservation in the water conservation a pond was being constructed and the community members were told were accountable to take care of that as an asset okay all right great so sorry to interrupt but go ahead after you left satwa what did you do so like then i had a passion to continue my journey in the social impact sector and but explore something different at satwa i was working with the corporates and the non profits but i still wanted to continue in the social impact sector only so i was looking for a work where i get a smaller team and i get a chance to lead the projects and work closely with the ceo and the co-founders and work in a different setup so at gdi partners we solely work with the governments or the philanthropies so uh, so i am working with the philanthropy international philanthropy and we are managing their port, uh, portfolio of grants uh, worth 35 million dollars for example one of the program is uh, if we see in rural areas women are largely the uh, the users of the digital infrastructure but not the owners so the, the program we are running on the ground is where women are being given an opportunity to learn how they can provide the uh provide internet facilities and digital infrastructure to their uh, to their community so alongside we uh, we are trying to find new interventions as well so something new innovative which can be done to improve the access to digital connectivity for women in our country okay wonderful so uh, i can see that you are really passionate about getting results on the ground and i hope you have got some but I don't want to interrupt, but please go ahead. Sure, I'll share some uh, more insights from my time at uh, Satwa at my time at EY. So, alongside my work, I have been also be, uh, be volunteering with the with the social impact and uh, so social impact at tech startup Global Governance Initiative. So, Global Governance Initiative is a is an uh, ed tech firm founded by Naman and Shatakshi. So, five years ago. so it's a it's uh, it's creating a revolution in the youth sector for the people who are in the age group of 17 to 35 where i joined this program and i was a fellow is a fellow in the at global governance initiative and i got a chance to interact with the cxos of the leading leading companies for example the arun mayra who is the former chairman of bcg puneet chandok who is the Uh, who is the ex asia chairman of the uh, uh, of uh, who is the who is the uh, who is the head of the south asia uh, amazon team and i got a chance to learn about different sectors for example management consulting public policy impact investing so this was the time when i was working at ewa i came across G, uh, an opportunity called dgi and uh, so do soon i discovered that where i want to go next so i discovered that i want to work at the intersection of business and impact so i get a chance to learn about the public policy as well and the management consulting as well okay good it's a good intersection to be at you know i think it's a very good approach uh, one doesn't just have to be on the ground all the time one needs to really get the resources there so i think it's very good okay please continue so so what i believe that we're having worked for almost 2 years in the impact sector i believe that uh, it's it is hard but it is very uh, you know uh, like it it's it's such a work which gives you personal satisfaction that you that what you are doing is actually showing the results and creating difference in the in someone else's life and i would say people want quick uh, quick results but this is not possible in the impact sector because it uh, what we are trying to do is we are trying to uh, do behavioral change in the in the community for the communities 
and uh, impact is not a switch you can turn on it's a flame which is slowly kindled to light Mm-hmm. and uh, so um, so this is my th- third job but is uh, but what i feel as a person like i've always wanted to be a people's person and try out different things in life so uh, so like uh, i always say that uh, uh, one should ne- one should always have the courage to try out new things uh, so this is like uh, and and hence i find my work at gdi very um, so where i uh, try something new every day try something challenging is a what uh, makes me happy and motivated to do more okay wonderful uh, that's a great philosophy to have i'm glad you are doing it so two questions for you um what are your ta- you know you didn't do a masters degree i see you did something you did a masters degree but in uh, dance right right but not in the professional field right so that's a decision you made and i think others would like to get a sense of how you made that decision and any talk any thought about your own future sure uh, so the, the uh, so the, the degree in dance uh, the masters degree in dance that was that i did alongside my regular work in regular school days itself so i started learning kathak at the age of 6 uh, uh, sorry when i was in 6th grade yeah uh, at the age of tw- at the age of 12 so it's uh, if one wants to do a ba a bachelor's degree in in, in dance so that's a five years that i was able to do it in my school years itself and the master's degree i did it uh, during my when the when the covid time was there so it's a two years degree where i did it during that time so it's like a not, not a full time involvement so i did it alongside my work yeah. and uh, secondly uh, about doing something in my for my own professional Uh, grow doing a master so at this point of time i want to try ex- and explore different sectors to know that where i want to go and know where i don't want to go for example at eva i worked in the audit sector so i after working for a year i was sure that i don't want to continue and make my career in audit and hence i switched to the consulting sector and yes consulting i am enjoying it but i want to explore multiple sectors within the social so within the dev sector itself for example mm-hmm. impact investing the government advisory philanthropy advisory working with the non profits and i am doing these uh, doing these and uh, and eventually after a couple of years then uh, i'll be able to decide it which is the best course for me uh, either it's mpp or it's mba or it's mba so i would want to do it from the best university of the world wow <laughs> that's a great idea <clears throat> but do have a plan b in case you don't get there we we'll never know what happens right okay wonderful anything yeah. else you want to tell us uh sure so what i believe as a person i don't uh, uh, i don't like to work on set templates but rather have uh, always as a have a vision to do something new and uh, i always uh, feel there are four principles of life which i uh, which i believe can ever help everyone the young the youngsters who are exploring new paths first is to go all in in whatever you are, whatever you are doing uh, because one never uh, discover what is your you know what is your passion through partial commitment uh, no matter on whichever project we are for how much how long we are but it's always essential to go all in we dis- we will discover our passion our purpose and our long term and short term goals as well Okay. and second i say that to to never get stressed because the uh, in this world of cutthroat competition and uh, uh, we we uh, tend to work for more than 18 hours and we always have multiple side hustles but uh, balancing work and life and never being stressed is the is the is the mantra one should have and third is that uh, i would say uh, don't be a victim because they were in which at whichever position we are in life there is there will always be people who are better than us and who are below us so it doesn't make sense to compare ourselves with others rather find opportunities uh, create opportunities and develop our own path and uh, fourth i would say uh, to build on to build on one's strengths we can spend our lifetime and we can it still we will still be not be able to fix our weakness uh, fix our weaknesses and so rather the good option is to be build on our strengths to become uh, the what we are good at and even create our niche in a particular sector Oh, wonderful! All right, it's very, very positive philosophy that you have, <clears throat> and thank you for outlining it so clearly. Uh, I'm not going to comment on it because this is not my place to comment. It's your talk, 
So I'm just happy to say I am glad that you are so clear about it and you've articulated it well. Okay, let's continue. Uh, sure. So then uh, I'll share some more insights from my uh, from my time at college and time at Global Governance Initiative. So Global Governance Initiative, as I was saying that I was myself a fellow. So uh, when I got a chance to meet the CXOs of, of BCG, of McKinsey, of UNICEF and like and likewise, then I also when I was an alum, so I contributed to the community by doing few initiatives. Uh, for example, doing industry partnerships, then inviting speakers, doing uh, or or inviting employers, or doing community sessions. So I always wanted to be in a, in a, in a leader's position, in the uh, so to to drive the events, to to lead a team. And uh, what I feel while while working in a team, what I have gained some really important skills, such as the uh, such as communication skills. Uh, on doing doing negotiation and uh, working to, uh, together to achieve goals. Uh, so, and in this process, we have partnered with multiple organizations who have contributed to this, uh, mm -hmm. to, to GGI as a community. Okay, wonderful. All right. I think you had some slide to show. Do you want to show it now? Uh, sure, I'll do that, yeah. So though we were discussing about the my career path, so that uh, shows that only, but I'll still uh walk you through it again so uh, on how it has been uh so it was during the 2017 and i'm thankful to my parents that they made me choose the commerce as a stream and then eventually i was able to get, get a get an admission in a good college in delhi university so i uh, did become honors where i got a chance to learn about the multiple sec sectors from business to management to human resources to accounting to finance and everything the best thing about Gargi College is it's very rich in extracurriculars. It, it has the highest number of societies in, in Delhi University. I think more than 53 societies, if I'm not wrong. And the one is free to choose as many as you want. But of course, you can be a leader in only two or three, not more than that. So during my uh, uh, third year, I was in the, in the student council as well. And I had the pleasure uh, on the annual day to receive the best all-rounder award in commerce. Uh, in a department of 400 students of commerce. Wow. Okay. And along, along, alongside the commerce department council, I was in the Connecting Dream Foundation uh, club as well. It's a club which works with the government schools in Delhi. So we used to the government schools and we had set up libraries in, in the government schools and we used to do tree plantation drives and uh, other book donation drives as well. And uh, alongside that, I was a member of the Trader for Tomorrow, where I learned how to trade and invest, and I did used to do that during my college days. And uh, I was also an NSS volunteer, where I used to go to multiple NGOs and contribute my time over there. One such NGO is the Shire Home in Delhi. The Shire Home is a home for disabled, where we used to go there and uh, meet the elderly people who are disabled and contribute our time with them and engage with them. And uh, these people used to make some diyas and candles during the Diwali time. So we also contributed uh, in that and also organized e some events for them. Then I had, <laughs> during my third year, I sat for, sat for the campus placements and EY was the first company. So uh, so though I had, the, had uh, other things planned, I wanted to go for my master's uh, right after the graduation initially though then during the pandemic when i started working my thoughts changed hence i want to do it after a couple of years now but EY was the first company i sat for it and uh, luckily i got the offer as well so then uh, in 2020 in pandemic they, when there was nothing to do so i did have the offer so uh, EY was the best thing for me to start with so i started with my job in the audit division and uh, so i was working in the a uh, wealth and asset management team doing the external audit of the wealth uh, of the private equity clients based out of Luxembourg. So it was the first job, and uh, along with the some technical skills in audit, uh, uh, I also acquired some people skills, corporate skills, how to work with your team, how to uh, how to uh, work with uh, how to see how the, how the managers work, how the partners work, and at the same time, I built my network as well with people working in different teams in the audit team the consulting team the and and the, which in, and i am still in touch with uh, these network because what i feel is our network is our net worth in the uh, in today's in, in today's day and age okay and uh, 
and after th- uh, that i found that i do not want to continue my career a career in audit so hence i was exploring multiple sectors and at the same time i was a part of the gji community which i was talking about and gji is a 5500 plus member uh, strong community and these are all young people who are all working or studying in the uh, in in uh, in colleges in india and abroad some are consultants some are data scientists some are uh, engineers some are lawyers some are journalists and likewise so uh, having talked to people who are not from my background i got good insights about the other sectors as well then i was able to decide like when i wanted to switch from ey so i had five options to choose from i had offer letters from five different companies and in five different sectors so then i found my passion aligned with the with solving for impact doing impact consulting so thereby i joined satwa satwa is an msme uh then uh, after working for satwa i have thought uh, i have gained some good skills in program management portfolio management csr strategy and how the csr landscape has evolved in india uh, to share more on this so uh, now the companies do not feel that for to, for them to do a csr it's not that an ngo comes and they fund a project so we have what we used to do as csr consultant is uh, advise the cxos to move from a project uh, to move from a pr- uh, uh, project mode to a problem solving mode so so we uh, and we we had four anchors four anchors i would say that a corporate cannot solve one you can you cannot solve for everything so you should choose one as the primary anchor and one as the, as the secondary anchor the primary anchor could be that you do the interventions uh, in a particular geography or second it could be that you solve for a particular thematic area be you know, it could be education it could be healthcare or it could be innovative finance or it could be cross cutting if you want to do it cro- uh, across multiple themes and third is the stakeholder you do you want to solve it for your employer for, uh, for the benefit of your own employees or for the rural communities and the fourth is the business do you want to build a good uh, business brand by doing the interventions or rather create a socially responsible brand so after choosing for one of these anchors uh, one should really then then structure the csr programs uh, for to make a long term and sustainable impact and the, the learnings i got through the, through the working in the csr space i'm able now leverage these while working with the philanthropy and the non profits and the social enterprises in our country okay and then yes. from july uh yeah at july i've been working at the gdi partners where i mentioned i'm doing couple of things one working with the philanthropy second working with the uh, uh, working on few uh, uh, on org building initiatives uh, building the organizations given gdi is a very young organization we'll turn 3 on 1st november means we'll be 3 years old on 1st november so i have been contributing to the uh, so uh, to the social media initiative or doing some corporate volunteering initiatives for our for our team or uh, we are organizing one planning uh, planning to organize one pan india event on the uh, on one of the sectors say be it education or health or skill development in the month of december so i'm ideating on that on how to on on what should be the theme of the event who should be the participants who should be the speakers so all in all i'm contributing to the organization building okay good what else uh so uh, like uh, as i said like uh, as a as a person i always feel in uh, uh, picking up diverse things so you learn as much as possible because this is the only age i feel in 21 to 20 years that one can explore different sectors then uh, as one grows the corporate ladder it becomes difficult to switch sectors yeah all right <clears throat> i'm happy to hear such a positive story and you know you've had a lot of success uh, and congratulations on that anything else you want to add any tips for young people uh, thank you so much to adding to the four five uh, thing which i had shared a couple of minutes ago about what i feel as a life i would like to conclude by saying that destiny is not a matter of chance as many people believe what i believe destiny is a mere matter of choices it's all about the choices we make in life that uh, that 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 create a difference in our life okay wonderful <laughs> yeah, very optimistic view of the world uh, see, i define my own success and i will make it happen in my way and that's great wonderful okay 
I think we can end it here and maybe we'll see in a year where you are with this. So let's say bye to the viewers and I'll be back with another young person or an expert soon. Till then, bye everybody.